Uh, thank you very much, Helen, and I'd like just briefly to contribute to uh, Kathy for organizing this. Uh, it's always so nice to work with them because things that are organized by Kathy run beautifully, um, and they do so without me having to do anything. And um, thanks very much indeed to them. Uh, to begin with a, a brief anecdote, and it ties into the kind of thing that Wang was saying this morning. I was working in, in Beijing in uh, 1995 and had a great deal to do with various of the media outlets, including uh, CCTV, Central Chinese Television. And when it came to the anniversary of um, the end of the um, War of Resistance, as Diana referred to it yesterday, the end of the Second World War, uh, there was uh, about a month with very extensive coverage of that war. Um, for four hours every night on CCTV1, uh, the station was required to show um, material which related to the war of resistance against Japan. Most of it was, was old movies, so those familiar movies about, about resistance and guerrilla warfare came out. But one of the things that was created new in 1995 um, was a, I think, two-hour and very moving documentary about the uh, Nanjing Massacre. And I think that that was, it marked a transition from a narrative of resistance, which was the way that the story of the Japanese occupation and the Chinese reaction to it had previously been told, to a narrative of suffering. And what we have now and since the, I believe, the, the mid-1990s, is much more of an emphasis on suffering and sacrifice, and perhaps less of an emphasis on uh, heroic resistance, or at least more of a balance between those two things. In the sense of a narrative of suffering and sacrifice, I have been very struck in the last couple of years by um, films and novels that have come out, two films by Chinese filmmakers and two novels by Chinese novelists resident in North America, um, which deal with um, the Nanjing Massacre. Diana Lowry mentioned them in her talk last night. The two novels that I will be talking about are Ha Jin's novel, Nanjing Requiem, and uh, Yang Geling's novel, The Flowers of War. Uh, the films will be Lu Tran's um, film, Nanjing Nanjing, also known as City of Life and Death, and Zhang Yimou's recent film, The Flowers of War, from, uh, well, based on uh, Yang Geling's novel. Um, ha Jin's novel first. Ha Jin, who is, um, now based at Boston University, has been um, resident in, in the United States since 1989, um, and has written a number of novels set in his native China, although he writes in English. His novel about Nanjing, which is called Nanjing Requiem, uh, is based on a number of historical sources. And um, it includes, of course, um, Iris Chan's book, um, the Rape of Nanking. It builds on, on um, Iris Chang's narrative, and it does so in what strikes me as a rather interesting way. Ha Jin's book, and Yang Ling's book as well, and um, not surprisingly, Johnny Mo's film, all have two elements of heroism. Those two elements of heroism are the element of sacrifice, which is that element which is shown by uh, Chinese citizens, and in particular, young female Chinese citizens, for reasons which will um, appear clear later on. And the other element of heroism is the heroism which is shown almost exclusively by foreign nationals, and that is the heroism, if you like, of the savior, the heroism of the protector. These two forms of heroism run parallel, 
And when I talk, in, as I do in my title, about seeking for heroes among the rubble, it's these two kinds of heroes that I'm talking about. Hajin's narrative is focused on Jinling Women's College, part of the safety zone established to protect some of the citizens of Nanjing. Um, the establishment of the safety zone is credited to John Rava, um, who is somewhat patronizing, I always think, talked of as the good Nazi, um, but who clearly had a major role in the saving of very large numbers of human lives um, in the weeks following the siege of Nanjing. Um, the novel's fictional narrator is a colleague of the college's real-life principal, the American missionary Minnie Votrin. And the novel recounts her attempts and those of her colleagues to take in the unfortunate and keep the school open to protect them and continue the mission of education. Um, there is an enormous amount of idealism about missionary education, which one picks up in reading Hodgkin's novel. Um, I'm going to read you a little section of this, and the reason that I've chosen it is because of this um, sense of the reliance on the foreign missionary, in this case, as protector. Um, this is historically something which is perfectly true. Is Wilbert around? Um, we have one of Tim Brooks' students who, who wrote um, a, an undergraduate thesis on the subject of the American missionaries um, during this period. And I'm hoping that we'll hear from him in the discussion uh, that follows um, this session. The bit that I'm going to read comes towards the end of the novel. It's six months after the Imperial Army has entered Nanjing, so May of uh, 1938, and the time has come for all of those people who have been protected uh, to leave and return home. So, from Hajin's novel, Nanjing Requiem. The next day the camp was closing, and most of the women and girls were leaving. Some slung their bedrolls over their backs, and some carried their belongings with shoulder poles. I admired the husky ones among them who would become good farmhands back in their villages. Many of them came to thank us for their six months stay in Jinling, which was an experience they cherished. Around 10 a.m., a large crowd assembled before the central building to say goodbye to Minnie Votrin. She hurried out to meet them. At the sight of her, the 400 women and girls sitting on the ground in a semicircle rose to their knees. Lulian stood up and shouted in a strong voice, the first knock. The crowd count out, their heads touching the ground. The second knock. Rulian cried out again, and the crowd repeated the same act. Unlike them, Rulian, Our Lady Fowler, was on faculty, but she acted as if she too were leaving. Get up, get up, please, Minnie shouted, standing in the middle of the semicircle and gesticulating, her palms upwards and her fingers wiggling, but nobody listened to her. Holly stepped aside and joined me. I was watching with my hands crossed on my abdomen, wondering how in the world Rulian had become their leader. The third knock, she chanted, and the crowd count out again. Rulian, tell them to get up, Minnie pleaded. By now the crowd had begun crying in mixed voices. Goodbye, goddess of mercy. Long live our savior, Principal Votrin, a voice called out. The crowd repeated in unison, some swaying their heads from side to side, long live our goddess of mercy. So that is one kind of heroism, and it's the same kind of heroism that we see in Yan Ling's novel, The Flowers of War. The English uh, version of this, which uh, is the one that I will make available to anybody who wants to take a look at it, is actually an expanded version of a short story which was created um, after John Mo had decided to make it uh, into a movie. So it's, it's a funny kind of in between a short story and a novel kind of text. But it is also set in the safety zone and it is set um, among a group uh, of young women who are protected by an American priest, Father Engelman. 
um, also, I believe, a historical figure. Um, in the novel, uh, which uh, is set rather earlier in um, the historical period, just after the entry of um, the Japanese army into Nanjing, um, sorry, uh, the American priest, Father Engelman, finds himself in charge of two disparate groups of young women. Uh, the young students who had been uh, part of the choir singing in the church and a group of prostitutes from an upscale Nanjing brothel uh, who seek shelter there. There are uh, other characters who are uh, protected by the priest, included, including a couple of wounded soldiers. But it's principally these two groups of women who are of interest to us. Needless to say, they have very little in common with each other. They are kept apart from each other. But at the crucial moment, it is an act of sacrifice on the part of, these, of one group of these women, and it is the group of prostitutes, uh, which allows the young students to go free. They essentially offer themselves, instead of the girls of the choir, to the invading Japanese army to serve as, as we are called, as they're called in the novel, comfort women. And here, with the notion of comfort women, we come to, if you like, the metaphorical point of this. The Nanjing Massacre is very frequently referred to, um, I don't know when it was first referred to it by this term either, but as the rape of Nanjing. And it is the theme of rape uh, which informs both of the movies um, that were made about the massacre, the Trans movie, the Flowers, uh, sorry, the Trans movie, Nanjing, Nanjing, and Zhang Yimou's movie, The Flowers of the War. In both of these films, the act of sacrifice which is made by young women is the act of offering oneself as a comfort woman in order to save others. I won't show you any clips from the Flowers of War. We're going to see the movie in its entirety tonight. For those of you who are going to come tonight, I have to warn you that it is a gut-wrenching movie. Um, all of the things that we know about Zhang Yimou's filmmaking are in evidence here. Um, stunning visuals, beautiful filming of young women, uh, a very powerful musical score, shameless manipulation of our emotions, and rather successful manipulations of our, our emotions. Um, and all of this in telling the story of these two groups of women. What Johnny Mo has done, as he always does, is add things that weren't there originally. And what I find so interesting about Johnny Mo's um, reformulation of Yen Goling's book is that he also feels the need to present a heroic character who is a foreigner who comes in to save people. This is the character who's played in the movie by Christian Bale. When Johnny Mo writes the movie, he kills Father Engelman off. Father Engelman dies, and the person uh, who comes in to embalm his body uh, is a mortician, played by Bale, who, through a series of rather surprising events, takes on the role of the priest, takes on the role of the protector, and is the one who gets the girls in the choir to safety, even as the prostitutes, the, the real heroes, I think, in a sacrificial sense at least, um, are being led off to be comfort women. There is more to it than that, but that's where it relates to the, to the book, and um, I think that those of you who come to see the movie uh, will see the additional things that are added, and it's, it's a powerful piece. Because we're seeing it, I'm not going to show any clips, so I'm going to move on to Lutran's movie now. Um, Lutran's movie is as different from Johnny Rose as 
a story with much the same setting and much the same theme can be. While Zhang Yimou films in a kind of glorious Hollywood style with a big soundtrack um, and a famous <coughs> actor, uh, Lu Truan goes for a kind of documentary approach. It's a sort of docudrama, handheld cameras, it's filmed in black and white, uh, and there is a much less grandiose soundtrack, although it's quite a moving soundtrack. We'll hear a little clip of it um, in the extract that I'm going to show you. Lu Truan's movie is, like Johnny Bo's, very hard to watch. Uh, it is a violent movie which recreates some of the brutalities of the first week of the occupation of Nanjing. It also brings in the historical figure of John Raba. It brings in some other uh, Western figures, but Raba is the important one. Raba is um, the one who has set up the safety zone, but simply having set up the safety zone is not enough to protect everybody, because he needs to ensure that the inhabitants of the safety zone are fed, and, are, and there is some guarantee that they will be left alone by um, the Japanese army. Early in the film, uh, Raba tells um, his assistant uh, that he has been recalled to Berlin. Uh, this comes as a terrible shock to those around Raba who are essentially depending on him for their safety. Uh, Raba can do nothing more for them. Uh, but he tries at least to strike a deal with the Japanese to protect the inhabitants of the safety zone. This is a terrible deal. This is um, a nightmare of a deal. And it is this uh, deal that I'm going to be showing you, the, the, the clip dealing with that. Tim, could you... some sense not only of a very moving film, um, but also of the two kinds of sacrifice that I have been talking about, the two kinds of heroism, that extraordinary heroism, the sacrifice, and the heroism of the protector represented here by Baba. Um, so why am I showing you this stuff? I am only showing you stuff from the Chinese side. I am a student of Chinese literature and um, Chinese film. And that's really all I have to offer here. I'm not suggesting um, that there aren't different ways of looking at this, but I am saying that this is now, if you like, the national narrative of what happened in Nanjing. Is this anti-Japanese propaganda? Well, it's certainly nationalist. It is not the kind of propaganda that was in favor or in fashion, say, 20 years ago, which was, I repeat, a narrative of heroic resistance against Japanese occupation under the leadership of the Communist Party. That has been replaced, if you like, by a larger narrative um, and a much more tragic narrative and a narrative of suffering and sacrifice. Um, this is a kind of, of narrative which is clearly acceptable to <coughs> these authorities um, and in the, evident, in the interests of the clearest um, explanation I can have as to the relationship of these people with the Chinese government. Ha Jin and Yan Berlin, although based in the United States, were in their youth employees of the People's Liberation Army. Um, as was Wu Chuan, the filmmaker of Nanjing Nanjing. So three of the four of these have been in military service in China. Um, but I think for all that, this is a new, more general Chinese narrative than simply a party narrative. Um, and why it is that in addition to the narrative of sacrifice, you need the narrative of rescue um, I'm not quite sure, and perhaps Wilbert will be able to provide us um, with some more in the way of historical information about this. I'm just here to present words and images. Thank you very much.